Welcome to a different kind of Nonsense Wars production. This is a look at the 2015 Technic set 42042 Crawler Crane. The title is Build Commentary, as this is less a proper review and more of a dialogue on less covered aspects of the construction, the process and product that caught our attention. The 2005 set 8275 motorized bulldozer has a good example of the sort of thing I am looking for. It is well and good to talk about the feature set or structural integrity of the model on the whole, but did you know that the motors driving the tracks are arranged asymmetrically. The motor on one side drives the front sprocket and the motor on the other side drives the back sprocket. This really irks me as the performance of each track is not the same. In fact, this design causes one track to jump off its sprocket in a hard turn, but only in one direction. That is an extreme example, of course. Most of the things we inspect are much smaller quirks in the construction and instruction. So ever since Technic sets started going studless, they have moved toward odd full stud spacing, so it's unusual to see this half spacing found in the base. Uh, they need to do this in order to align the small idlers with the centers of the large sprockets as the latter are too wide. The offset in the upper idlers come from the offset skew joiner, which is not used a lot these days. Also around here are double stacked six length half beams because there is no six length full beam. The back of the gearbox is three parallel studless beams. They are basically trying to create a breadboard before the breadboard part has been developed. One of the many stages in the gearbox is a 16 tooth gear mated to a 20 tooth gear. This is a, in my opinion, non-standard meshing, as there's no way to make this spacing work with full studs and or half studs. It seems to work okay, but I don't like it, and I personally would try to avoid using these meshings in my own models. The gearbox has two clutch gears. One is in the logical place right after the motor, but the other is on the output of the slewing function. Typically, the clutch gear should be placed close to the motor on the drivetrain such that it can transmit the most amount of torque before slipping, but we're not sure why LEGO thought the slewing function in particular needed to stall with less torque than all the other functions. The connection between the gearbox and the tracks goes through a diagonal drive shaft. The geometry looks a little bit sketchy, and the shaft is not particularly well supported, as there are several places where a rotating shaft is also load bearing. The lack of support is generally okay if there isn't a lot of torque being transmitted but it's unclear how much load is passing through here. There is a gearing up stage in the drivetrain for both spools. Typically you don't do this as it means you are gearing down more than you need to somewhere else or even adding another reduction stage which is not efficient. 
Lego had to have this stage, though, because a larger gear on the top shaft would interfere with the dark gray pin. Even then, the pin is a cross-axle pin rather than the usual stop bush pin in order to dodge that smaller gear. Lego has long coordinated their packaging and instructions as with numbered bags corresponding to instruction chapters. This set goes one step further. The two different spools of string are wrapped with different colors of tape, indicating which string should go with which spool, as the strings are not the same length. The number of quote-unquote regular parts in Technic sets is next to nothing now, but the crawler crane still has a single studded greeble. Uh, to me, it kind of begs the question of why have it at all. There's other greebles like the rails that aren't studded. Lego uses the same wordless instructions for all regions, so they have to describe processes without saying anything. This is fine for normal procedures like placing bricks, but sometimes a specialized sequence comes up, such as this wiring diagram. The steps specifically show how to thread the cable through all the pulleys and even where to tie it off, but they don't actually tell you how to tie it off. I feel like Lego usually goes through a lot of effort to make sure that someone without any prior knowledge of anything Lego can build a set, but tying a knot is not necessarily trivial for someone who has never done it before, so I think it's strange that they don't provide more guidance. On the subject of instructions, there are a few more alignment diagrams in the set, such as this alignment for the claw. So the model has four motorized functions, raising and lowering the boom, raising and lowering the grabber, slewing the body, and driving forward and backward. The intended operation of the machine appears to be leaving the motor running and engaging the various functions when necessary, and I actually really like this. There are a couple non-motorized functions as well, opening and closing the claw, and raising and lowering the cab. The function selector is basically an eight-speed gearbox with four functions and two directions for each function. There's two selector levers and the gears are arranged in such a way that the winch and boom can be operated together and the slew and drive can be operated together. Directional control for each function is perhaps redundant for a set like this, I would have rather had a master forward and reverse switch and another function or two, such as a separate gear for each track or somehow opening and closing the claw. Independent direction control would have been better for a set like 42052, the heavy lift helicopter such that you can keep the blades running while lowering and raising that winch, etc. Speaking of the functions, I think the movement of the boom and the movement of the winch are sensible functions, but I'm not entirely sold on the drive or the slew. Given that you have to keep your hand on the body to start and stop the slewing motion, 
it seems a little bit silly to motorize this. It does have a 360 degree plus traverse though, so you can set the switch and let it keep spinning. The body also slews freely if you disengage the drive. Finally, motorizing the drive from a control on the machine also seems a similar sort of weird, and it is a little bit sad that the machine can only go forward and backward. All of the functions are surprisingly smooth running, including the drive. They also run quite slowly, though. It can take quite some time to raise and lower the claw through its entire range of travel, which is about twice the height of the machine itself. Raising and lowering the boom is just as slow, but it's less noticeable since the range of motion is smaller. Even the manual function of opening and closing the claw takes quite a few turns. Uh, to run it through its range of motion. Overall, I think the functions are pretty well implemented on this set, but I don't necessarily agree with the functions they chose to implement. It's also not very many functions for a pretty large set. I think the 8043 motorized excavator was a much better value at MSRP despite having fewer parts and a higher MSRP. That set is also kind of my gold standard for a motorized Technic set though. On that note, this is the end of the commentary, so have a nice day.